Join my live streams at livestream.com seven days a week, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time. And that all you have to do is look for that picture you see when my name pops up. Type in Dana Durnford at livestream.com. Hi to everybody that's joining the live stream today. And I think we got a really compelling show again today. Let me turn that off. So we are streaming. All you do is find a button that turns everything off and life is really good. It turns everything off and life is really good. I'm going to start off the stream today with 30 seconds on the guitar. I still am way out of practice, but we'll give it a try and see how that works out. So watch your volumes. I'm going to turn it down on my end. Hopefully that works out. maybe we get better luck I put an extra pick up in that guitar I put an extra pick up in that guitar watch your volumes and so sometimes I don't get it right sometimes I get it right Fukushima we left off yesterday in episode one on unit four we'll bring that little pretty baby up here and unit four of course anybody's not familiar with these reactors let me remind you very quick Japan had a 9.0 earthquake that traveled through the country at 9,000 miles per hour. It shook the country for six minutes. It was felt in Florida a half an hour later. There was many, many, many aftershocks, huge aftershocks that day. Followed by a tsunami. The tsunami ran through the whole country. It didn't just run through. Um, it didn't just run through the nuclear power plants. I'll give you a quick picture of what that would look like. And so about 500 miles of the country was pounded heavily. Now these reactors at Fukushima in particular suffered four meltdowns. They detonated and they threw their rods all over that site. This is unit one. This was 100% meltdown, melt through, uh, melt out. That's unit two. So all of these reactors, this is unit three. And we're going to pick up on unit four. And these are all 100% meltdowns, melt-throughs, melt-outs. And so if you look at these reactors, what you realize is that, oops, Dana, get back out of there. Maybe that'll help. Fukushima has reactor 1, 100% meltdown. Reactor 2, 100% meltdown. Reactor 3, 100% meltdown. Reactor 4 which you can see up there, he's okay. <laughs> no, seriously, that's what they claim, he's okay. But we know better, and so we're not going to have conversations about that nonsense today. What we are going to talk about is many things today, and that these are the most important topics you could ever understand. These are very pertinent and, in, and important in every sense of the word because you have been deceived now for four and a half years. They originally told you there was no melted reactors. But when you're looking at that building, that's the original picture. And that even though the entire country, and so we'll jump into that, even though the entire country was awash in uh, debris, let me show it to you. And so they couldn't get power into the nuclear power plants after 90 minutes. The power plants will start melting down. And because this was symmetrical throughout the whole coastline, you can go look up the tsunami videos in each of the cities along the coastline. And so because this was symmetrical throughout the coastline, that's why they're only opening nuclear power plants on the inside of Japan. So we see the word Japan on that side of the island, not the open side where it says Tokyo. So the power plants that they're opening are not going to be where that earthquake was too. You see where that pounded really heavily. Those power plants were also slammed with a tsunami. And so these are stories that you probably never heard before if you're not familiar with this subject. But many nuclear power plants melted down on the coastline. And so it wasn't just the four at Japan reactor that they finally admit to, but 
they they rarely admit to, but they have admitted to it. And so these four power plants are hemorrhaging into the ocean. The ocean currents are actually real. The jet streams are real. And so that is a problem with the academic world where they don't want to admit these things exist. Now, if you think that the fallout was contained to the power plant, you might ask yourself, why are they collecting this stuff throughout the entire country and putting it in bags? Huh? Yeah? That's a pretty interesting question, yeah? Well, because the tsunami didn't allow them to get into the power plants and stop the chain reactions. Not that they could after 90 minutes, but it took many, many uh, weeks before they finally got power there. Everything was melted and gone by then, washed away by the tsunami throughout the entire country. And so that is the lie that has been perpetrated upon you. Here's another one of them. Let me give you a better, uh, smaller graphic so you can see it a little bit better. And so we got a little better quality today, I'm hoping. I boosted up the quality dramatically, actually. <laughs> and before I jump into this story, we're going to go over and talk about James Colbert from the Colbert Report, who just put out a video. We're going to bring in my laptop here. Hopefully, that will show up. There she be. I'll get rid of my moniker. And so... That's our live stream, by the way. <laughs> That'll change in a second as it catches up with the live stream. This is what a polar bear, a healthy polar bear, would look like. Okay, and the reason we're going to start off in this is because this is James Colbert. He had 211 views. I watched the whole video. He didn't mention anything about the emaciated polar bears, but he made fun of people that talked about it. And so these cute, furry little global... Warming icons are in danger, according to the bought and paid for campaigners in the global warming alarmist industry. Now, I'm not advocating today anything in that conversation, even though... Um, let me jump back to me for one second. So you got to understand that there's 90,000 container ships on the ocean. Just hang on, bear with me. There's 90,000 container ships on the ocean. And each one of those produces, um, they're burning bunker fuel from the container ships. So this is the fuel left over from petroleum product production. Now this stuff is supposed to be on a toxic waste site till the end of time, but they decided they can burn it in the Pacific uh, or in the big industry. And so a container ship, 16 of them, produces more pollution than all the automobiles on the planet. 90,000 of them that are currently on the ocean with another 2,900 in, in uh, shipyards being built. Now, one of these will produce more pollution than all the automobiles in Canada, New Zealand, and Australia combined, and then some. It's around 50 million cars and trucks and everything. So there's animosity equivalent to 42 trillion people on the planet every day from the ships that are on the ocean. But yet we breathe the air, yet the planet survives, yet there's... The adverse effects are hard to recognize in many instances in the common person's life. Okay, let's go back to James Colbert's uh, video this morning. And now, this is an emaciated polar bear. He didn't bother showing anybody that one. And this one was followed for 700 miles. He started with it because the Fukushima has killed. Let me come back. A, I got a list here for what the Fukushima has killed off, just for a quick list. Missing are the squid, the herring, the anchovies, the krill, the sardines, the salmon, and there's over a list of 300 marine birds. Now, I can say that with authority, because what we done was 15,000 miles of the Canadian coastline. I'll give you a, a quick rundown of that. We've done it 15,000 miles of the Canadian coastline in that boat. And I better check my volume because sometimes that volume comes on. And it's really loud. But So we've done 15,000 miles of the coastline. And that's what this looks like. All those arrows are just emblematic of spots where we could have spent a week or more. And where we, we got those pictures up at the nuclearproctologist.org. 
And then hang on, I'll bring it up for you so you can find it if you're looking at this later. So you go to the nuclearproctologist.org and you will find the pictures from that expedition. Does that make sense for you? And that instead of looking at like that, the coastline now looks like this. And the, as instead of looking like this everywhere you went, the coastline never looked like that in 15,000 miles. It looks like what you're seeing now, rather. But it never looked like this. Now, this is what I'm used to as a commercial diver and being on the ocean all my life everywhere I go. And when I go with shorts, it's slippery and tricky and you don't want to tread on the animals. Now you can go ashore anywhere. You will not fall down no matter where you go. And so that's part of what we do. And in context of that, urchins could be the next victims of uh, wasting, sea star wasting disease. This is um, the Smithsonian this year. And he said, so far urchin die-offs have been observed and documented at four sites along 200 miles of the coastline. And so because of that and another fifth site, they declared a mass mortality event for that. But yet we covered, we covered 15,000 miles, 260 days, Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima. And we show that there is a extinction event. Not only an extinction event, extinction event, extinction event, but a dramatic event for all 8 million species on the Pacific Ocean. And so the list that I'm showing you earlier, this list coming up here, is just a representation of the, the food chain is now destroyed and gone. And that's why we say the things we say, which are might sound salacious to some people, I'm sure. In comparison, Chernobyl lasted 10 days, Fukushima 1,700 days and ongoing. Chernobyl was one-third meltdown and one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Fukushima has four meltdowns. Chernobyl was 300, I'm sorry, uh, six or 700 kilometers from the ocean. Now the rivers can still bring it down there, but it's still not directly on the ocean. Fukushima is right on the ocean, hemorrhaging directly into the ocean. Chernobyl, over a million dead, over three million children with permanent disabilities, according to Kofi Anna at, in 2002 at United Nations. And in Fukushima, according to the media, no one has died. Yet seven people died on a single street in Fukushima shopping street just dropped dead. We've never seen that on our planet before. Chernobyl has an exclusion zone. Fukushima, they moved them back. Chernobyl, the homes were demolished. Fukushima, you get free homes if you're a pregnant. And so some people are not playing with a full deck. No matter how they try, they are not playing with a full deck. <laughs> I don't care what you think about their rationality, but they're not playing for a full deck. Like I say, once again, Sea stars from the Smithsonian after five spots considered a mass mortality. Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima to the entire coast show there's a mass mortality of every species, ignored, ridiculed, marginalized, demonized, vilified, relentlessly in the media. Chernobyl, for instance, think about Chernobyl, 2006. Look at the third sentence. For the next 10 days, spews the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs. Now, it stopped after 10 days. That's why he said it that way. But it radiated 150,000 square miles of Europe and beyond. But yet, Fukushima apparently didn't cause any damage. <laughs> Four melted reactors, like I showed you earlier. Fukushima, from our, and we are the authority on this, Fukushima, let me bring that uh, up for everybody. Estimate hundreds of years to stop the reactors. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days, remember? And the dead of the Pacific is my estimate by early 2017, it'll be nothing left. And that, and we'll go back to James Coburn in a minute. And that, that means 4 million species will, are wiped out already in four and a half years. And so anybody who thinks that Fukushima is not an event upon this planet, have got a, a lot to learn. Fukushima is an early extinction level event and we need to act and there is no hope to save the Pacific Ocean. And we, we cannot ignore this any longer. This is our watch, this is our obligation, this is our last stand on this planet according to the data that we accumulated showing that there's an extinction event throughout the coastline. And so what that means anybody, we go back to Cobert in a second, 
because this ties together. What this means is that there's supposed to be 4 million other species in that ocean, and they didn't recede the coastline. So if the species that I talk about, the 5,600 species, the 600 algaes, the kelps, the 480 species of worms, the 78 species of starfish, they only admit that 18 have disappeared, but I show they're all gone, and there's only a couple hanging on, and that they are lethargic and wasting. And that there's 76 species of sea anemones, and that we only found two species. Out of the water, and they were symmetrical throughout the coastline, and but the only one that was really popular was the green, but it was hard to find adults. Uh, there was also uh, 6,500 invertebrates without the backbones. There's uh, the flannas, the floras, the insects, the spiders were missing throughout the forest on that whole expedition you see behind me. 260 days, a couple of hundred thousand pictures documenting it with the GPSs, and, so, and show that all those arrows you see there are still nowhere near what we actually covered. We covered all the inside channels, the fjords, the inlets, and verbatim, repeatedly. And so there can be no mistake that what we talk about is important, because everything we talk about is what they say doesn't exist. This is Dr. Raymond Gilmedy from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. Dr. Raymond Gilmedy is everybody's favorite villain. He killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 years. And with americium plutonium uh, from a chain reaction. It's the same stuff we talk about. And all his animals did die, every one of them. All of them, bar nothing, died. And so the consequences the toxicity of inhaled plutonium dioxide in beagle dogs was fatal after three to five years. Uh, tumors of the lung, skeleton, and livers began at about three years after exposure. Bone tumors were the most common cause of death. Lung tumors, 46. Well, the bone tumors were 90. That's cut out there. You can't see it. Sorry. Liver tumors were found in 20 dogs were the cause of death in only two dogs because of the bone tumors and all the other tumors. But this was study after study after study. Per, right, and Dr. Raymond Gilmady had the 2000 Distinguished Scientist Award. And that how can you compare fruit flies to his studies? How can you compare? Um, how can you compare bananas? Let me bring up that one. I got one for you. You know, it's a nuclear moron. You're listening to if they say it's like a banana. You know, it's a nuclear moron. You're listening to if they said it's like a potato chip and that now you should disregard everything they've ever said and that you should never, under any circumstance, allow people to fall for that. If you hear someone say a nuclear moron, you'll know they're a nuclear moron if they say it's like getting on an airplane or walking in sunshine. These are the most despicable people imaginable. These are the people with the PhDs that are put out in the media to lie to you. You know it's a nuclear moron if they say there is more natural radiation in fish than there is from Japan's reactors. You know that is the stupidest thing imaginable on the planet. And my all-time favorite, radiation is everywhere. No one ever died from Fukushima. And so the, what these people are saying is unconscionable. That is unconscionable to say that kind of stuff. It really is. It's, it's absolute uh, murder. By telling people to go out and eat fish when the ocean is actually contaminated, that's murder. All those people, when they die, that's murder. It's like me giving you a poison pill, but it takes you several years to die. Is that not murder? If I shoot you and you die several years later from that injury, is that not murder? And by proxy, if I'm a respected academic and I tell you, like Woods Hole and Uvic, that it's okay to eat the fish, and you find out that it's full of... Uh, radioactive uh, material from Japan's melted reactors that are all hot particles, like Dr. Raymond, Raymond Gilmedy's studies, those particles are nowhere near as hot as what's coming out of Fukushima. What's coming out of Fukushima is mixed oxide. It's MOX. It's where they reclaim plutonium and uranium. And let's go back to James Colbert. But it's where they, um, so James Colbert ignored these pictures and came out and poked fun at anybody in by proxy that talked about them. 
saying, oh, this is ridiculous. There's no such thing as starving polar bears. But yet, I, what do you see there? These are disturbing polar bears that starve to death. I'll get back to that headline later, maybe. But that was James Colbert. Now, let me come over here and show you what a real bear looks like. See that? Huh? You got any idea? Look, I come from a place. Hang on. Like, I come from a place where you shoot polar bears every year or two. Some or someone in some town close to me or in my town shot a polar bear. And then I've seen lots of them. I used to take a gun out on the ocean on the Atlantic in case the polar bears showed up when we were diving. And then when there's ice around, you can't go out there without a gun because the polar bears can come aboard your boat. It's not that we have a history of that happening, but, but we do. We have histories of them climbing in to the windows of bingo halls every year. We see these animals every year where I'm from. I'm very familiar with the polar bear. Let's go back to the polar bear. So this polar bear is a healthy polar bear. This polar bear is not a healthy polar bear. These are 2015. These polar bears travel 700 miles. This one in particular disturbed the day. Disturbed the day. Scientists tracked him for 700 miles. Think about that. And he starved to death. Because all the fish, all the sardines, all the herring, all the anchovies, all the mackerel, all the sardines. Oh, got to bring that back up. All the krill, all the squid, the salmon, and 300 birds. So I only counted 11 species in 260 days. And that from one end of the coastline to the other end of the coastline in a straight run over five days, I counted uh, 400 birds. Most of them were in front of communities. And so it's an extinction event in every sense of the word. That's why all the whales, sea lions, the birds are all dying because all of their food that you see below in that, in that list there are missing. Yeah? Yeah. That's actually what's going on. Let's go back to James Colbert. Colbert report doesn't bother mentioning showing people that and explaining that away because you can't. This is what a healthy polar bear looks like. Look at that. Now see, that's what I'm used to seeing. That's impressive, yeah? Look at that. That's 2013, if I remember correctly, or late 2012. Um, that's 2015. That was in uh, Norway, I believe. This was a photographer took this picture, had uh, followed these birds, or birds, these bears for the last 40 years or so, taking pictures of them, and cried when they seen it. They have never seen that before. And then BBC and CBC and everybody jumped on it and blamed global warming. Never blamed the lack of food, they blamed global warming. They never said all the food was missing. This is what I'm used to seeing. That's why we carried a gun when we were on the Atlantic Ocean diving. Years ago, you wouldn't have to do it now, you might have to do two people here now, but look at these animals. This is Canada. This is northern Canada's, or east coast north Canada, if I remember correctly. Uh, polar bears. And this bear was uh, 2013 August, northern Canada. Or, no, that one was in, um, I think, Salivar. Don't quote me, I can't remember now. I got so much of this stuff. Uh, but there you go. And so James Colbert coming out and talking about making fun of global warming and the polar bears is a nice way to demonize anybody who tries to have a conversation about polar bears being emaciated. That's bullshit is what they're going to say to you. That's nonsense is what they're going to claim. That's nothing but the Photoshop is what they're going to get out into the chat rooms and pronounce. And so, I can bring up, say hi to everybody. Hi, Ken, Bob, Lonnie. Illusion is over. Atom. Divine rights. Candace. Lonnie. RWP. Climate change is real, though. It is real. But it's not in the context. It's being used as a tool to bludgeon anybody to talking about 
Fukushima. It's used as a tool to take away from Fukushima. It's used as a tool to try to marginalize Fukushima. It's used as a tool to keep uh, the nuclear industry alive. So, just making sure I say hi to a few people. And looking good. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kate. And Kate. Daniel Amthurst. And we know Elaine is out there somewhere. Alex. We'll just say hi for a few moments. Just so I can get back on track now. We just finished up with the James Colbert emergency broadcast to counter his video that he put out today. And I'll just make sure I say hi to everybody. We got lots of comments. Hi, Doke. And hello, everybody. Okay, we're going to go back to the stream here in a second. So uh, let me hang into the stream for a second. Is the, um, is the quality better today? Is the audio okay today? I'll just hang on for a few seconds. I'll come right back and I'll read a few comments in a few moments. So throw in a few comments. I'll get rid of that back, uh, background picture. Let's get into some details of Unit 4. <coughs> Excuse me. It takes me a while sometimes to live stream. And I love the Hounds of Fukushima. That's why I exist. And the chat room got 47 people burning the ropes there. Feel free to say hi, everybody. Hi, Daniel. Divine. Adam. Yeah. And Thirst. Rattle Shark. Finnegan. Illusion. Let's keep going then. Sounds great. Quality is good. So the video is a better quality today, I hope, anyway. Let's keep going. Looks good, Terry Ann. Hi, Terry Ann. Hi, everybody. Sounds good, says Candace. Bob. Okay. Sounds okay. It's a bit low. Here you go, Bob. I bumped that for you. Uh, everybody else going to have to turn down their sound a little snot. Audio's going in and out. In and out. In and out. Hi, Robert. Okay. Let's keep going with the stream. Get back into the program. Um, so everybody, there you go. I was just reading your comments. Audio's going in and out. Yeah, pretty good on that in, says Adam. Hi, everybody. Hi, David. Okay, folks, sorry if I don't get anybody else. We're going to zip back into the show. Show, show. i got to learn what I'm doing at some point. Dana. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's get that shit. Old page out of the way and come back with that. Other page is what I meant to do. Dana. And. Okay. Looking good, folks. Thank you. And so we're still new at this. We don't really have a good handle on use live stream uh, yet. But all of Japan got washed away. Okay. Now, they couldn't get in and stop the tsunami. And so what they'd done, they couldn't get in and repair the building because the power was gone, everything was melting down and detonating and blowing up and releasing a massive, enormous amount of radioactivity. Think about the detonations. Think about they got in with garden hoses. These reactors need a million gallons a minute. A million gallons a minute to stay cool. And just hang on one second. I'm probably not going to find the one I'm looking for, but I'll try. Just give me one second, folks. I'm looking for a headline. I'll pop back. I'll pop back and do it. Yeah, there it is. Here we go. I'm going to bring this back over to the laptop. And some concerns raised over Peach Bottom Nuclear Plant proposal to suck up another 13.5 million gallons a day. Now, what's the big deal about that, Dana? Well, you can see they're running those rivers dry, the nuclear power plant, and it's running it dry not only from 13.5 extra million gallons a day, but because it sucks up 2.2 billion gallons a day, and it returns 35.5 million gallons daily to the river. But what's going on is that, hang on, what's going on is that the water is... Uh, the agency is concerned about those 35 million gallons they're putting back from the 2.2 million they're evaporating with the radionuclides 
because it lessens the temperature of the heat of water before being poured back into the river. And so what they're doing is, and I'll come back over, so what they're talking about was that 2.2 million gallons, 35 million goes back into the river, but it's so hot it's killing everything in the river. And so that fire hose you've seen behind me is not 2.2 billion gallons a day going on these reactors to keep them in check. They need a million gallons a minute. And so when you take it into context that the whole coastline was um, destroyed, how could they get 2.2 million gallons or billion gallons rather, 2.2 billion gallons or whatever it took per day for the other reactors to keep them from melting down. How could they get to the other reactors? And, you know, as a visual for you, think about that stuff running through the reactors. I'll bring it up for a bigger picture for you so you can really appreciate how devastating that tsunami was. Think about that. How... TEPCO has released pictures of flooding of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Do you think the tsunami was just uh, that spot only? If you don't send your hate mail to Dana Dernford at hotmail.com. Okay, so Unit 4 is where we left off yesterday. We're probably not going to get much farther than that today because <laughs> of James Colbert. Now, James Colbert, just a reminder, he has Fukushima updates where he peddles in Goddard, um, UVic, uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and uh, the, the media darlings for the nuclear industry, the bootlickers, the, lap, the lapdogs, the little puppets. Uh, that's all he puts up there. And so he doesn't bother putting this picture up there and explaining to people that they tore everything off, and therefore there's no full pull inside of a building that's wrecked. It doesn't look like that on the ceiling inside of a building that we know melted down. Yeah? And then we know all this damage because they couldn't get in there. And they couldn't get in there because the whole country for 500 miles of Japan's coastline looked like that. Hang on. Dana Durnford. Hi, Ben. I'm live streaming right now, my friend. Um... I'll check my email or give you a call back after. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. You gotta answer the phone. I answer I always answer the phone. Don't care who phones me. I'm gonna answer the phone. Now, Japan earthquake didn't just destroy Diachi. Yeah, yeah. And that the detonations weren't contained just to Fukushima plant. And we know that, we know that definitively just by the evidence that they collected radioactive material throughout the country and put it in bags. And they got 166,000 tons of it, they admitted recently in the headline, that they want to bury in the ground. And that they're upset because the locals won't let them take that stuff and put it on their property for a couple of years. They said, oh, no, we'll get it off the property in a couple of years. But it leaches out and contaminates the property even more. And that when you have a flood, it gets washed away anyway. And that the people that collected it were sacrificed. And that the majority of them didn't even speak Japanese. They were immigrants who didn't speak the language, who were desperate for a job and don't understand what they're doing. Or out of that. Remember, not everybody on the planet is connected to the Internet. And not everybody is privileged, like Canadians, for instance, like myself. Sometimes I wonder if I'm privileged or not. Um, what else have I got here for you? We know we got something else there for you. Bling, bling. <laughs> Let's get on with the story. Anyway, all of these reactors are hemorrhaging into the ocean. And so starting tomorrow's stream is what we're going to cover is unit one, two, three, and four in more detail. And today we're kind of just introducing you to Fukushima. And so this is the Pacific Ocean model. This is based upon six years. It's only based up on a single release from a single reactor. It's not based up on, it's based up on uh, just several days releases from that reactor. We know that, and I showed you yesterday, I talked about that. 
But we'll go into details of how that inventory is gone and how we know it's gone and that it's admitted that it's gone. That's unit two. How all that inventory is absolutely positively gone and how all the inventory of that is absolutely positively gone. And where did it go? Well, it didn't go back into the fuel pool, like the official pictures. These are all official pictures I'm showing you. That's the official picture of the inside of that. None of that makes any sense to anybody that under, looks at the other pictures. How, how can you get that and that? Huh? Allegedly in that building. Of course, RT says Chernobyl. Fukushima is the second of Chernobyl. So RT is still propagating out that actor. You don't believe me? I'll find a headline for you. How dare you? How dare you? Here we go. I'll bring it up for you. Yeah, yeah. Let me get that chummy out of the way for you. Russia shut down Fukushima reactors. Look at after Chernobyl. Boom, daddy's bananas. They'll use that to demonize me and arrest me again. They accuse me of death threats when I'm charged with criminal harassment of people who say that there's no. Somehow in this crazy world, I'm the bad guy. They went for sentences to beat me up with. And they waited until months and months after every, I said the same. This isn't a disclosure. And for a year and a half, they used draconian measures against life to censor me on the internet. That's in the disclosure. That was FBI. That was Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. That was the RCMP Sandage Department, Constable Steve Crooks from the Sandage Police Department. And UVic, University of Victoria, coordinated that to censor me in the disclosure. They claimed they didn't know who we know who Dots is, connecting Dots is. Uh, his name is um, Lou. We'll be reading that in the newspaper soon, I'm sure. <laughs> he... He's done. He's done. He, he hung himself. Big time. Every sense of the word. But every video he made was to demonize me. He stalked me. took pictures of my home. His day is coming. His day is coming. I'm waiting for a phone call. And then his day is coming. <laughs> There's no if, ands, or buts about that. He's a done. And he's going to pay dearly. We'll get all the dots on him. But his name is Lewis from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. There's a good possibility he's a police. He's definitely hooked up with the intelligence agencies. and But we got his name. So the RCMP couldn't find my name, so they used draconian laws to censor me. But they couldn't find my name. They used... Well, we know who his name is from Connecting Dots Silver Gold, man. So here's my number. 604-223. Get your last shot in. 076 bucks. I'm taking you up on your bet. That's three days in a row. You monitor everything I've ever done come out and attack me, but now you don't monitor that part. Oh, okay. Probably best that you didn't. <laughs> you have no idea. I can't wait to see you in my courtroom. It's going to be just <laughs> glorious. <laughs> no one's going to touch you. I'm sure the silver and gold community can't wait to see pictures of you. <laughs> <laughs> My cigarettes don't got 7,000 chemicals. Don't swallow your tongues. I got CNT. They're natural tobacco. They got a filter. The filter makes the particles smaller to get through the liners of your lungs. Um, My cigarettes don't have 7,000 chemicals. If you can't deal with me having a cigarette, go get your volume. Start sucking them down into you. Read the prescriptions right after that so you don't trip. But anyway, that was Russia. Yeah, here's Russia saying that three melt is not as bad as Chernobyl. What is your opinion of them saying that? Put it in the comment section. I'm going to In about 15 to 20 seconds, I'm going to go over and read some of those comments. Fukushima is the second worst nuclear accident on the planet. Let's hear it. Nobody else. I don't just want me saying it. I don't want to hear other people say it. I want to hear people. No, Dana, that's correct. Or, or Dana, that's outrageous. Or... Don't be shy. I won't stomp on you too hard. Thanks, Sam Thirst. I don't see anything there. Let's bring it up to comment. We're in Chernobyl. 
Today, kind of got to Coop Puff Albert putting out his video. And when, he says at the end of it, he's exposing. Let me see debunk that. He won't even mention my name. Okay, so we got some comments. Let's go for it. Words more carefully. I always said you got to do it. What do you mean, chose my words more carefully? I'm not yelling. Words more carefully that we should hang people stepping out of line. How is anything I say stepping out of line for my right to say it? This is a fabrication. Unless it's meant to manipulate. Or am I? I don't get where you're coming from. You know, I'm ashamed for not speaking out sooner. For more. For not getting in in her face. Not has. I'm, I'm guilty of only that. This <clears throat> is you can't wrap your mind around. Anybody else? I'm wondering, I don't pander to anybody. I don't. That, uh, that done to me a couple of hundred times in the last year of life. For not getting your facts straight is more like it. Well, we know why they're saying that. What difference? Do you think that they're not every species on the planet? Lonnie, not your microphone. Everything sounds like you're yelling forward to go out and spend a million dollars in proper equipment. It's all they do is whisper. They don't actually talk. They wake tone all the time because they have such sensitive out. They can't talk and they can't raise their voice. If you do, everything's in a whisper. Shit. Everything I got is a blessing. Everything I got is the basics. It's okay, George. Line from there. Case is if we don't have an organism. Well, the Pacific Ocean is perishing. <laughs> Do. <laughs> Comments work better, bitch. What do you call it? We need you, not a martyr. How do you become a martyr? I'm far from killing myself. Before you put that in my conversation. Because people are influenced by what body. No, next one I'm gonna to have to get rid of. You. Interviews. The CBC interview accused me of death threats, and then everybody out there get your fellas in the world to want me locked up. There's no way they can prosecute me without uncovering what they did uh, with conjectures and slanders. Others saying I was charged with criminal harassment. They all said, "Do you know how extraordinarily different those charges are to people across Canada?" Everybody across this is nonsense. My cigarettes don't got 7,000 chemicals. So let's keep going. So they sprayed in uh, gallons a minute. They had to fly that into Japan and find a way to get it to the nuclears. To the south. And so they didn't get any water in there. The pools don't look like that. They tore all the pools off the roof of it and all the reactors off it. The building was totally destroyed. Same as Unit 3 is totally destroyed. Same as unit two is totally destroyed. Same as unit one is totally destroyed. Same as all of them melted down. Same as the heat signature shows. Same as the fact that they need millions of gallons a minute. And then blah, 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 blah. Verbatim. No, it's okay, Dana. You shouldn't have raised your voice, Dana. You, should, you shouldn't have called a lawyer a lawyer, Dana. You shouldn't have stood your ground, Dana. You shouldn't have been a murder, Dana. That's what the lawyer said to me down in the courtroom. The first time, are you trying to be a martyr? What the fuck are you talking about? I'll be walking out of here 12 noon for Christ's sakes. What an idiot. No, I'm not kidding you. And so, let's cover a couple of headlines as we wind down. Uh, fears marine life is being poisoned by the nuclear material. Let me move myself over. Maybe it'll make some sense for somebody. Maybe not. You can cut out one eye. Oh, I can get that camera to move a little bit. Hang on. I think so. Oh, I got it. Let's read through some of these headlines anyway. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Hang on, folks. There you go. That's more tolerable. I don't like being too close to the camera anyway. Look over here on this screen, so sue me. Fear of marine life is being poisoned by nuclear material. Fear of marine life is being poisoned. We want it. There we go. That's what we want. Lethal threat from Fukushima radioactive water flown in the Pacific. Well, you don't see. Yeah, because they never put all the reactors in it. They didn't admit that the currents travel at 5 miles an hour, 24 hours a day, get here in North America in 45 days, and that there's a plume every day behind it going in the ocean. Radioactive water reached 3,200 kilometers east of Fukushima six months ago. 2012. In 2012, radioactive water was being picked up by rain. If that's all we got to go by. But all, all they talk about, they describe everything as a single plume. They describe everything as 
just a couple of elements. There's 2,000 elements we're worried about. What is six months ago? Proceed a model prediction by several years. Well, that's the, yeah, several years. Proceed a model, human health is first reason listed for study. IEAEA experts predict radioactive seasoning will carry it across the Pacific to West Airs. That was May the 5th. Well, the jet streams brought it over in three or four days, all the way to the Atlantic, to Iceland. It didn't stop coming out of there. But the people I'm accused of said this is not real. Every headline here is not real. People that are accusing me and the RCMP in Sandy's Police Department, Constable Steve Crow, around 10,000 headlines of these, and then found a couple of sentences, ignored all of that, and said cases predicated upon every one of these headlines not being real. It hit the shores of the U.S. and Canada for decades. No, Dana, it's not real. Dana, so it was no, Dana, you conspiracy theorist. Dana, you just... You just need one whale with a tumor or a lump on his head. Radiation, like heavy radiation, it wasn't a tumor, it was a sore. It was infested. It was. Fukushima radiation, possible culprit, and huge starfish die. But not, why not look at radiation, huh? Well, what happens? Finish out the string. But anyway, all species, all of them, the ones, there's two species, tidal zones. And the reason, that's why you can see a lot of sea earth with the dive fleet for two months during the expedition. But, and the sea urchins got free reign because that was their predator. But you won't see any of the abalones, the little necks, the, the manila, the oysters, you, in the video or the pictures of underwater, but you see star seven oceans. But then the divers were trying to harvest them, right? They were having held time finding any quality whatsoever or quantities. Water with nuclear fuel coming up from the ocean floor off Fukushima coast? Chernobyl. But yet, here's RT saying it's not even equal to Chernobyl. And cease for years. I guess we're almost close to the end of the show. Reactors. Well, I showed you the pictures earlier. The buildings are totally wrecked. Contaminated water into the ocean, Fukushima is officially claimed. That's not talking about snow and rain estuaries where they're actually dumping this stuff at nighttime. This is just the reactors in the state. Just one day is catastrophic. 600 tons a day for 1,700. That's over the top. That's crazies. That's madness. Think about it. Uh, Chernobyl only lasted 10 days, right? Fukushima containment, contamination in the ocean, reached Alaska in under a month. But that it didn't show up here. And that every their whole case against me is, is based upon... And based upon... Uh, these headlines not being real and based upon the jet streams and the ocean currents and everything else not being real. Discharges of Fukushima. Hi, Raj. I'm almost finished, Raj. We're only a couple of minutes away. Like four minutes away. Melted reactor cores will burn again if water is not perpetually poured in and TEPCO proposing some of it be dumped into the ocean. Ha, ha, ha. Listen, these tanks, if we lose the site, look, we got no choice but to dump it somewhere, but why dump it in the ocean? Why not Build tanks here, drive these trucks through communities. We can't drive, we can't contain this stuff. But we got no choice. Bring in barges and fill them up and deal with it. You can't keep dumping it into the ocean. We got to stop it. All that matters is stopping the reactors. And so that's the one hour stream. It's like, that's what the whole country looked like. And so reactors after 90 minutes, you couldn't. How could you get power in there after 90 minutes? Why the Pacific Ocean is dying because there's multiple reactors. Most likely entire coastline. That's the end of the ball game. And good night, RWP, everybody. These live streams are at live stream seven days a week. Type in my name, Dana Durham. You see my pictures show up. That's how you subscribe. I see the countdown timer. It's 10:30 a.m. Durham for nuclear proctologists. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.